My name is Fermin Herrera. I teach in the Department of Chicano Studies and I teach Mesoamerican Civilization. I also teach an introductory course to classical Nahuatl. Uh, first of all, the word Nahuatl means clear, which is interesting. It, it's the term applied to the language of the people that we know as Aztec. <laughs> My involvement with classical Latin and Greek that got me interested in the Nahuatl, and it was the term classical. The work that, that Fermin Herrera, Professor Herrera does is, is important to me because it's, um, it's relevant to our culture, you know, and I use our very loosely because, like, um, you know, I blend in with everybody, but I'm not Mexican either. I'm, I'm, my parents are from El Salvador, so, but it is spoken there and in other different parts of what's known as Mesoamerica. So to me, it's kind of like a, a reclamation of, our, of a part of our culture that's been hidden. It is still the most widely spoken language uh, native to North America. I also teach a course on the regional music of Mexico. I play Mexican harp, more specifically the harp style from the southern part of Veracruz, that's where it originates. It's called Jarocho, and I play with a group that I founded, uh, oh, I don't know how many years ago, 30-some years ago. And it's a family group, but it started out with a sister of mine and three brothers. Now, a falsetto is simply a flip from the chest voice, ah, to the head voice, ah. But my daily life, you know, living with my father growing up, with him, he was always practicing his own musical group. They would come to the house to practice, so it was, it was a great great upbringing, a very, very happy one, um, because there was always music. My brothers and, and sisters and I, we have a Mexican name, indigenous name. Mine, mine is not Nahuatl, it's, it's a Mayan name, but uh, growing up, it was we were definitely different, <laughs> you know, because um, I think at the time, uh, we were probably the only kids who had indigenous names, and now you, you come across more, more kids with, with uh, Aztec or Mayan names. So. My father, who's so knowledgeable when it comes to Nahuatl and to so many things, um, it's, he's still, I'm just baffled by how much he knows. I happen to find, in this case, the Nahuatl language so beautiful and so worthwhile, in particular the concepts that are expressed through it. And you have a lot of treasures that are hidden within the language. It, it, and it's not because I am of Mexican descent. I, I could be of Chinese descent, or you know, Japanese descent, or French descent. I still, I think that I would still be studying Nahuatl because I, I find the concept so, so wonderful. It so happens that because I happen to be of Mexican descent, that I, it's more accessible to me. And the same is true of the music, right? I often told my students if that if I were Chinese or African, I'd still be playing Mexican harp because I would be drawn, you know. <laughs> to the strength, right, to the energy that all of that is in, involved. So. Niklatoa y Pampa Valley View News no toca Julissa Reyes. Reporting for Valley View News, I'm Julissa Reyes.